This is the first in a series of videos on compression springs, with the focus here primarily on working out the force, deflection and spring rate in this video. The force is the load transmitted at a given working length. Deflection is the unit of movement, this is generally taken from free length. Spring rate is the change in load per unit of deflection and spring rate is a constant. So now to our geometry. Free length is the uncompressed starting length. The minimum working length is the length transmitting the lowest calculable load generally confirmed as 20% compression or deflection in many international standards. The max working length is the length transmitting the highest calculated load. Max working length is up to 80% compression. However, some manufacturers will work to 85% depending on spring material choice. Beyond 80%, loads fall off the linear path. And we will go into what this means in the following stress videos. Solid length is the maximum compressed length when all coils are touching. It is sometimes known as the shut height. The solid length is beyond the maximum working length for the spring. So the three lengths we are interested in are the free length, minimum length and max length. We're going to avoid the solid length for this, this stage. The free length is included just for reference to indicate zero deflection. Forces are transmitted linearly between the minimum and maximum working lengths. Let's put together some inputs for calculating force, rate and deflection. The OD and ID of the spring are relevant, but more so is the mean diameter. Wire diameter, pitch, coil count and spring index are relevant and all contribute to force, rate and deflection. We'll go into these in more depth in future videos. Material choice is also important. For the following worked examples, we will use a stainless steel with a modulus of rigidity of 73,000 megapascals and an ultimate tensile strength of 1950 megapascals. Let's also add some force rate and deflection variables for reference. We're going to calculate these, it's true, but it's useful to show them here pre-calculation purely for learning purposes as they will cross over. So our working lengths are as follows. Free length at 40 millimeters, minimum working length at 33.44 millimeters, maximum working length at 13.76 millimeters, and solid length at 7.20 millimeters. The lengths make more sense if we overlay deflection. The minimum working length works out at 6.56 millimeters deflection. The max working length works out at 26.24 millimeters deflection, and the solid length works out at 32.8 millimeters deflection. All are in line with the 20, 80, and 100 percent rule. Our reference forces are as follows: F1 is the force at minimum working length, which is 2.91 newtons. F2 is the force at max working length, and this is 11.63 newtons. Spring rate is 0.443 newtons per millimeter. Force can be looked at in terms of the applied load between working lengths. If we know both, we can deduct one from the other to find the range. So F2 minus F1 will find us the range. And in this case, we come up with a force of 8.72 newtons. It's likely we will know the forces we want the compression spring to transmit. But let's say we don't know. If we take F2, for example, we can calculate by the modulus of rigidity times wire diameter to the power of 4 times deflection over 8 times mean diameter to the power of 3 times the number of active coils. If we input our variables, we come back to a force of 11.63 newtons. We can also apply the equation to force 1 by subbing the deflection. And again, we come back to a force of 2.91 newtons. The spring rate is a product of force over length. The change in force across working lengths is divided by the change in working lengths. And this gives us a 
spring rate of 0.443 newtons per millimetre. This can also be written in terms of deflection, and if we sub the working lengths for deflection, we come back to 0.443 newtons per millimetre. An alternative method of calculating spring rate is to calculate by the modulus of rigidity times y diameter to the power of 4 divided by 8 times the mean diameter to the power of 3 times the number of active coils. And this gives us 0.443 newtons per millimetre again. With a focus on the mean coil diameter, we can work out the deflection. 8 times the force at length times mean diameter to the power of 3 times the number of active coils over the wire diameter to the power of 4 times the modulus of rigidity gives us a deflection of 6.56 millimeters. We can switch the focus from the mean coil diameter to the spring index to work out the deflection. 8 times force at length times spring index to the power of 3 times the number of active coils divided by the wire diameter times the modulus of rigidity gives us a deflection. And this gives us a deflection of 6.56 millimeters. And just to show it translates to both lengths, we can show the equation for max working length. And here, deflection is 26.23 millimeters. So to summarize, we've shown multiple ways we can calculate deflection, force, and spring rate. Although solid length is also calculable, we focused on the actual working range. For the next couple of videos, we're going to focus on spring stress, and we will see how stress relates to force, deflection, and rate.